Hi everyone, welcome back to A-Level Biology Help. Today I'm going to be taking you through the Investigating Diversity section for HUA A-Level Biology. Also, I'll be going through a few exam questions and explaining the mark schemes. And as always, in the comments section, I will be putting timestamps so that you can skip to different sections in the video if you do not wish to watch the whole video. Right, so let's get started. So this is what we are going to cover today. So we are going to briefly recap on what genetic diversity is and how it's measured as well. Also, we'll be going through the process or the principles of sampling to investigate diversity. Also, we'll be going through how to calculate mean average and standard deviation, which you may have covered at GCSC or you might not have. Right, so genetic diversity. Now, I covered this in my genetic diversity and adaptations video a while back. So if you haven't watched that video already, go check that out in the corner. So genetic diversity is the number of different alleles of genes in a population, with alleles being different variations of the same gene. Genetic diversity can be measured through frequency of observable and measurable characteristics, so appearance, DNA sequence, mRNA sequence and amino acid sequence. Now the important thing to note is that the frequency of observable and measurable characteristics to measure genetic diversity is being used less and less now through the recent developments of gene technologies. Also, this method is less accurate as two organisms, for example, may look very similar or have similar features, but they might have very different DNA or have a, an actual high genetic diversity. So if I just get my pen tool out. DNA sequence, mRNA sequence and amino acid sequence are used more often nowadays as they are more accurate. So if something or two organisms have a more similar DNA, mRNA or amino acid sequence, then the more closely related they are. But it is also important to know that mRNA and the amino acid sequence is likely to be more accurate than DNA as mRNA and the encoded amino acid sequence do not contain introns. Introns are non-coding DNA. I mentioned what in the role of introns in my protein synthesis video, so if you haven't watched that, go check it out now. So here we have three species human, homo sapien, a chimpanzee, which is a pan troglodytes, and a baboon. So as you can see, a human and a chimpanzee look fairly different. However, their DNA sequences are 98% similar or the same. So this proves our point that um, the characteristics can look different. However, the DNA sequences show that these two organisms are actually very closely related. However, on the contrary, if you look at the chimpanzee and the baboon, they look fairly similar to each other. So the chimpanzee kind of looks more like the baboon than it looks like the human. However, the chimp and the baboon are less closely related than the chimp and the human, according to the DNA sequence. So, how do we investigate diversity, especially amongst plants? Well, we do this through a process called sampling. Sampling is necessary, so samples have, have to be taken because it would be nearly impossible to record data for every individual in the population. So if you had a field of daisies, for example, it would be almost impossible and very, very time consuming to count every single daisy in the field. So we have to take samples. These samples must be large for it to be representative of the population as a whole. And sampling also must be random to avoid bias. For random sampling, you can use something called a random generator to generate coordinates for sampling, for example. So to put this into context, here we have a pi nice picture of a daisy field. So 
Your sample first needs to be representative of the population, so the daisy field, as a whole. So if you just took a sample of a small area, so this area highlighted here, now that wouldn't be representative as, for example, if you're measuring the length of the daisies, the daisies in your selected small area might all have small lengths, however, daisies in other areas might have very large lengths. So the sample from your small area is not representative of the population as a whole. Also, your sampling needs to be random, so you choose your samples randomly. This avoids bias. This means that if you, your sample is biased, this means that you may purposefully pick the daisies with shorter lengths, which obviously wouldn't be reliable once you analyse your results. So, to analyse your samples, often you calculate the mean average, which you will have learnt about earlier on in your education. So the mean average is the sum of all values divided by the number of values. So here I have a table with some data about daisy length in centimetres. So here we have six data points. So the first step is to add all the values together. So 11 plus 5 plus 8 plus 6 plus 9 plus 12 equals 51. And we have six values as you can see by the table. So we divide 51 by 6 to get our mean average of 8.5 centimetres. But what can we do with this average? We can calculate standard deviation. Standard deviation is basically measures how much results differ from the mean average. And also can say if the, these differences are significant or not. Now don't worry too much about significant differences at AS. You touch on it more in A2 when we talk about chi-squared, for example. Standard deviation for a sample is calculated using this formula, which looks very scary, but I'll explain it now. So standard deviation in a sample is calculated by the square root of the sum of, so this symbol, which is called sigma, means the sum of, x, which are the data points, so the values, minus the mean average, so this symbol here, which is the x with like a line above it, means the mean, squared, divided by n, which are the number of values, so 6 in our example earlier, minus 1. Now, as I said, this is a standard deviation for a sample. Now, we use the standard deviation of a sample because we don't know the length of every single daisy in the field because we have just taken a sample. If we knew the length of every single daisy in the field, we would calculate standard deviation of the population. If you wanted to calculate standard deviation of the population, instead of dividing by n minus 1, you would just divide by n. So I'm going to go through an example now. So here we have the formula here. So here is my table with the same daisy lengths as before, and the mean average of 8.5 centimetres from before. So I have already calculated x minus the average. So 11 minus 8.5 is 2.5, 5 minus 8.5 is minus 3.5, and so on and so on. Please note that your values for x minus the mean are often negative. So the next step is to square these values, so I have already done that here. Please note that when you are squaring negative numbers, that the answer is always positive. So the next thing you need to do is to add all these together to get the sum of x minus the mean squared. So we've got a value of 37.5. So the next step you need to do is to divide this by n, so the number of items minus 1. So as you can see by the table, we have 6 items, so n equals 6. This means that n minus 1 must equal 5. So if we plug these values into our formula, 37.5 divided by 5 is 7.5. And to get the standard deviation of the sample, we need to square root this. So the square root of 7.5 is 2.74 rounded to three significant figures. So this is our value for standard deviation. Right, so that is it for the content, and now I'm going to get on to some exam style questions. So this is the first question. Table 1 shows how a bird called the blue throat I'm not going to try and pronounce this. This is the scientific name. 
or the binomial name, is classified by biologists. So here we have this nice table here with some gaps missing. Now the question says complete table one by filling the seven blank spaces with the correct terms. So we need to fill in this table. Now this requires knowledge from the species and taxonomy section, which I have already made a video on. So if you haven't watched that video yet, please check that out in the corner. So you need to know for this question the order of the taxa, which is do domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. So we can easily fill in the first column. So kingdom, phylum, class, order, family. The next thing we need to do is to fill in the genus and the species of this organism. Now the genus and the species are what make up the binomial name of an or organism, or commonly known in popular culture as the scientific name. Now this is pretty easy as it already says the binomial name in the question, which again I'm not going to pronounce. And the first word in the binomial name is the genus, and the second word is the species. Please note that the genus is always written with a capital letter and the species is written with a lowercase letter. So let's look at the mark scheme. So mark point one is the names of the, or the order of the taxons. So kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, which we got, so we would get that mark. And the second mark is for putting the correct genus and species, which we wrote as well. Here it says, one mark for each correct column. So if you got, for example, the wrong order, you won't get half a mark or anything. You just lose that mark altogether. Also, it says allow genus and species if both placed in box of species, but not if both placed in genus box. So if you put the entire binomial name in the species section, you'll get the mark. But if you wrote them both in the genus box, then you wouldn't get any marks. So here is the next part of the question. A group of scientists investigated genetic diversity in different species of bird. For each species, the scientists collected feathers from a large number of birds, extracted DNA from cells attached to each feather, and an analyzed the samples of DNA to find genetic diversity. Table two summarizes their results. So here we have our table with three species of bird, the willow flycatcher, the house finch, and the blue throat. In this column, we have the number of genes examined, and here we have the number of genes examined that showed genetic diversity. So let's look at part B. In this investigation, what is meant by genetic diversity? This is a pretty simple one mark question, which is asking you for fact recall from the specification. So as I said earlier, genetic diversity is the number of different alleles of each gene. So let's look at the mark scheme. So the mark scheme says, number of alleles of each gene. We will get that mark. Also accepts, it accepts the number of different base sequences found in each gene. So you can be more specific talking about bases if you like. So let's look at the next part of the question. So here I've just copied the same table from the last part of the question. The scientists concluded that the blue throat showed greater genetic diversity. Just get my highlighter actually greater gen genetic diversity blue throat, than the willow flycatcher. Explain why they reached this conclusion. Use calculations to support your answer. So as it says, you use calculations, you need to include some kinds of numbers from the table to get the mark. So let's look first at what we need to look at. So it says blue throat in the question, so we can highlight the data for blue throat and the willow flycatcher. So these are the two rows that we need to look at. Now here it says the number of genes examined and the number of genes examined that showed genetic diversity. This suggests that we need to calculate a percentage of how many genes sampled showed genetic diversity. So to do this, we need to divide the number of genes that show genetic diversity by the total number of genes examined. So in the case of the willow flycatcher, that would come to... 0.28, which if you multiply by 100 will be a percentage of 28%. But if you calculate percentage for blue throat, which will be 81 divided by 232, multiply by 100, 
we would get an answer of 35% rounded to the nearest integer. So we can say in our answer that the blue throat has a higher percentage of genes showing diversity, with 35% compared to 28% with the willow flycatcher. So you need to mention numbers somewhere to get a second mark, as the question says, use calculations to support your answer. So let's look at the mark scheme. So the first marking point says has a greater proportion of genes slash percentage of genes showing diversity. So you'll get that one correct. You can put either one of these to get the mark. And the second marking point says the percentage is 35% compared with 28%. So we will get both marks for this question. Or you don't actually have to write it as a percentage. You can write it as a proportion which would be the same as the percentage, but you don't multiply by 100 at the end. So you can write the proportion is 0.35 compared with 0.28. Also, it allows correct figures that are not rounded up. So you don't have to round up to the nearest integer or whole number to get the second mark. So here is the next question, which again ties in with the species and taxonomy section. So species richness and an index of diversity can be used to measure biodiversity within a community. What is the difference between these two measures of biodiversity? As this is just a one mark question, you don't need to um, write a fact about each of these measures. So this is what I've written. Species richness only measures the number of species, as we said in the species and taxonomy video. Index of diversity also measures the number of individuals as well as the number of species, but you don't need to write that as well as species richness only measures the number of species. You just need to write either or to get the mark. So if we look at the mark scheme, it says species richness measures only a number of different species, or you can put it does not measure the number of individuals. It doesn't matter which one of these you wrote, you still get a mark. So let's look at the final question, which looks quite intimidating, but we are only going to do part of this question as this question is synoptic, so it crosses over with the A2 content or the year two content. So it says, scientists investigated the biodiversity of butterflies in the rainforest. Their investigation lasted several months. A scientist set one canopy trap and one understory trap at five sites. The canopy traps were set among the leaves of the trees 16 to 27 metres above ground level. The understory traps were set under trees at 1 to 1.5 metres above ground level. Now here is a good exam question tip. When there are numbers in the question, always highlight the numbers as they often require relation to them when you're answering the question, as they wouldn't just add the numbers in for no reason. So the scientists recorded the number of each species of butterfly caught in the traps. The table below summarises their results. So here we have this quite complicated looking table. So here we have seven different species of butterfly, then the mean number of them in the canopy and in the understory, and we have the p-value. Now don't worry about the p-value, you will get onto this when we study chi-squared in year two. So the question says, the traps in the canopy were set at 16 to 27 metres above ground level, which is what we highlighted here. Suggest why there was such great variation in the height of traps. As this is a suggest question, it requires your own ideas and your own knowledge, not fact recall from the specification. So my thoughts were because the trees vary in height which is due to a high genetic diversity again. So if we look at the mark scheme, the mark scheme says trees vary in height, which is the exact words that we wrote. So you'd get that mark. Tree, the trees varied in height, so the canopies were need to be, needed to be set at very different levels due to the trees having high genetic diversity. So you get that mark for that question. Right, that is all I want to say for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Please, please comment down below if you have any questions at all. I'll be absolutely delighted to answer them and I'll see you in the next video.